Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at water transfer schemes in the UK. This is part of Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. The UK receives enough water to supply the demand, but it doesn't always fall where it's most needed. The north and west of the UK has a water surplus where the supply exceeds the demand. There is high rainfall, lower evaporation rates and plenty of potential reservoir sites. These areas have a relatively low population density, whereas the south and east of the country has a water deficit where demand exceeds supply. This is the most densely populated part of the country and it has the lowest annual rainfall. So how do we get water from the areas of surplus to the areas of deficit? Well, what about a national grid for water? The British government has considered setting up a national water grid, similar to the national grid for electricity, where the water would flow through pipes from areas of surplus, such as Wales, to areas of deficit, such as London. This idea has been discussed for many years, but it has not been put into practice, partly due to the enormous costs involved. However, there are some parts of the country where water transfer schemes do happen on a smaller scale. The reservoirs in the mountainous areas of North Wales and the Lake District provide water for the densely populated urban areas in the northwest of England, such as Liverpool and Manchester. And the water from the Kielder Reservoir in Northumberland, which is pictured on the screen, is pumped into the North Tyne River. From there, the water can be transferred to three other major rivers, the River Derwent, the River Weir and the River Tees. These rivers then supply water to the major cities of Newcastle, Sunderland and Middlesbrough. There are many benefits to water transfer schemes. These water transfer schemes take water from areas of surplus to the areas of deficit. This means that fewer people across the UK will experience periods of water stress, which might result in hosepipe bans and other restrictions on water use being brought in. This is good news, particularly for gardeners or those with allotments. They also increase the amount of water available for farming and industry in the drier areas of the UK. Farming needs a lot of irrigation during the summer months in particular, so having a more reliable water supply means that crop yields are higher and farmers can make more money, as well as helping to increase UK food security. Water is also heavily used in industry, so having a more reliable supply could lead to an increase in economic activity with possibly the creation of jobs and therefore economic growth. However, there are lots of drawbacks of large-scale water transfer schemes. One reason for opposition to water transfer schemes is the cost. They are hugely expensive as they require so much infrastructure to pipe water across the country. Another reason is the use of fossil fuels to generate the power to pump water over large distances, meaning that these water transfer schemes have a large carbon footprint. Lastly, each scheme will have a big impact on existing river habitats. They usually involve building some sort of dam in order to create a reservoir and this can block migrating species along the river. But the reservoir will also be much deeper than the original river which affects the ecology as water temperatures will drop and marine wildlife may struggle to cope. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on water transfer schemes in the UK. Thank you for watching.